Hi, my name's Lisa. Join me to see how I used our new line of Abbey Rose fabric by Robin Pickens to make this fun quilt as you go project for hand stitchers or machine stitchers. Hi, welcome to How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. My name is Lisa and today you're going to learn how to do a quilt as you go two and a half inch hexagon by Daisy and Grace. Daisy and Grace is a company out of the UK um, who is distributed through Missouri Star. What you get with your Daisy and Grace templates is a two piece template. We'll use the first template, the inside template, to cut our inside shape and also our batting. And then we use the outer template to cut our background shapes. So here are the templates that you get from Daisy and Grace for your quilt as you go hexagon templates. I've removed the backing from my center piece already, but I wanted to show you that most templates come with a paper backing. And sometimes you can't even tell that the backing is on there. So I just wanted to show you, if you have templates at home that you haven't removed the paper, it's as easy as that and it leaves no residue at all. So your hexagons are made of three pieces. Your background, which is the outside of this block, or the cream color in all... So your hexagons are made out of three pieces. The background, which is the cream color edge on all these squares, the center, and for that I used a charm pack, perfect for five inch squares. That's your center shape. And then you need a batting, the same shape. So let's get cutting. I'll start first with your charm squares. Normally in a charm pack you would get 40 to 42 charms. And Robin Pickens pack has 42. You see how the template fits on perfect. Your rotating cutting mat is fabulous, of course, for jobs like this. I slipped my template. Actually, that's a good thing to mention. This is a fabulous template. In my last video, I told you about Ruler Magic, which I really love. This template didn't need it. So there are some center pieces. Next up, how to cut your background. For the background, you need to cut six inch strips. Now there is a bit of a, a proviso to that. The template is actually five and seven eighths, not six. And I had cut all my six inch strips, but it works just fine. So cut your six inch strip, cut off your selvage, fold it in three, and then you're cutting six at a time. I did put in a beautiful new blade when I started this project because I had tons of cutting to do. And I'm gonna line up my edge here so I don't have to cut both edges. And again, it's just a matter of working your way around your template. Apparently I can't cut and talk at the same time. And there are my background hexagons. Next up, batting. You've probably figured this out already. Five inch strip of batting. Now you can cut four layers. To do that, I like to use my large rotary cutter and I didn't bring that today. So it's simply a matter again of laying your template on top and cutting on all sides. If you're looking for an excuse to buy the rotating cutting mat, this is another project. It's just one of those tools you can live without, but once you have it, you use it all the time. There are my hexagons. Now I've got all my pieces. Let's move to the sewing machine. Now it's time to put our hexagons together. So take your background piece and lay it down. And now this works as a great template for placing your batting. Voila, and your centerpiece. 
Now, I did a little bit of fooling around with different tools to do my folding, and you can also fold in two directions. So I'm gonna show you. The first thing I'm gonna do is fold into my batting, into that edge, and then up over the top. And the first tool I'm gonna use are my glass headed pins. These are silk pins, so they're really um, thin. Any glass headed pin will work. Once that is pinned, I rotate my mat, and I simply do that on the next side, and that creates a really nice mitered corner, which you can't see because I have my fingers all over it, but you'll see it in a bit. And again, pins. So see how the pins kind of bubble things up? I'm gonna show you what I did to get rid of that later. Next side, and again, pins. Here's hoping I don't stab myself on camera. And again, and you do have to watch me fold all sides because you have to learn how to do the last fold. And I need something to stitch in the next segment. This one. Also be careful when you're folding not to push that center fabric to create a crease. You're kind of using your thumbs to hold it still so that you don't do that. Now on our last edge, we need to fix our end so that it is also a nice mitered corner. So we're gonna open that up, fold this in, and now I can bring this down to a nice mitered corner. Voila, with glass pins. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside and show you what we do with that. Oh, this guy came undone in a minute. Next up, number two. Let me tell you, after you do 42 of these, the pinning goes really fast. I did this sitting in front of the TV. So it's something nice lap work that you can do the folding. So next one, I wanted to show you these easy grab pins that we now have in store. They are really fabulous for people with uh, problems with dexterity. If you have um, arthritis or something that makes it hard to pick up little items, these are so easy to pick up. You can see I'm not struggling to pick up like I did with the silk pins. They're also a really nice length. We have a couple different sizes in the store. Everybody kind of has a personal preference of what size they like to use. All right, now I'm gonna show you another way to fold. So I've been working toward myself, which is most comfortable for me. But you might be someone who likes to fold away from you, which totally works. My pinning's backwards now. But there's no reason you can't do it folding toward the center. But you want to do want to try and make sure you pin those corners down. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this direction and show you again how to get that nice mitered corner. So you have to open this up, fold that down, and then it creates the mitered corner. Easy for you to say, Lisa. Voila. All right. but I have to show you my favorite method. Okay, I'm gonna leave that guy. My favorite method, and this is what I did for probably 36. I'm all about saving time. I find pins really finicky, although they totally work. I used my Wonder Clips. Now, I have a lot of Wonder Clips, so I could do a lot of these in at a time. And then I just clip the corner and put a clip. Turn it, move this clip to the corner, and put a clip. So, if you like Wonder Clips like I do, this might be the method for you. 
If you like pins or if you don't have a million wonder clips, maybe it's time to get some. All right, almost done. Let's move on to pressing. So why did I choose glass headed pins? Well, if I have plastic pins, I'm gonna melt them now as I press. So with my glass headed pins, and notice I said press, not iron. We don't wanna iron because we'll create puckers in the middle. So I'm simply pressing to set those seams. Voila. And again, I can press with these fabuli fabulous uh, easy grab pins because they are heat protected. There we go. Number two. Now, number three, I have a problem. But again, remember when I said I like to conserve my time? I went straight to stitching when I used my clips. Let me show you how. Now it's time to stitch. So I've used an open-toed foot so I can see where I'm going. I'm gonna put my needle down. And all I did was a simple edge stitch. It's actually quite relaxing. With the pins, you have to stop, pull your pins, at the corner, I'm gonna pivot and just continue stitching. With my hexagons, with the cream color background, I used this cream color thread and it makes the stitching virtually invisible. I'll show you a sample that I did using some fabric variations and some yardage. And because I had some bright colors as my outsides, like this hexagon, I used invisible thread so that it wasn't contrasting against my fabric. We were talking about invisible thread at the store the other day, and we all have prefer preferences for different brands. I prefer the YLI. Bev prefers the Sulky. But both of us like to sew with invisible thread both in our top and in the bobbin. So here's the second one with pins. And I do give it a, just a little back stitch at the beginning. And so again, just stitching along the edge, pivot at the corner. Whoops, wrong pin. So not a hard job. It's fun to sit sometimes and have a project where you don't have to do any math and any figuring. This is one of those projects. If you're a hand stitcher, you would use the same stitch you use for hand stitching binding to attach in this step. So again, a great hand project. I'm not much into hand stitching. I do Deborah's English paper piecing class, but that's the extent of it. Although I do hand stitch all my binding. All right, there's number two. And I know you've just been waiting to see what I do with the binding clips, because that went way faster. Boy, that corner's not folded very nice. But you know what? This project's so forgiving. So again, needle down, little back stitch. As I get to the corner, I pull my clip and my finger holds it till it's there. Pivot, stitch, pull my clip, whoop, throw it on the floor. So this was my preferred method I just found it faster. I don't have as much time to sew as I wish I did. So I quite often choose the fastest way to get something done. Voila, there's the last clip. Oh no. Perhaps I'm a bit more accurate than that in real life. There we go. Now I'm gonna show you how I stitch them together. So I'll just grab two of my hexagons and I actually, for all of my projects, write right in my pattern what I set my machine to when I do a zigzag. So that is my stitch width and that's my stitch length. Then I don't have to fool around every time and decide what I'm doing. So, oh look, it's set to four and three. All right. So all you do is butt your two pieces together. Make sure you, have, you don't have your single whole thread plate on. 
give it a little back stitch, pull them together and let your machine do the work. And that's how easy it is. Again, keeping in mind I have contrasting thread. I would never do that for a project. But there they are stitched together. Let me show you the projects I've made. Thanks for joining me for the video today. I just wanted to show you the beautiful Abbey Rose fabric that I use. This is the charm pack that I use. So the 42 squares from my charm pack created this table runner, plus any of the hexagons you see in here with the cream color background. I decided to try something fun and I bought some yardage to create my opposite hexagons. So I put my plane in the middle and the print around the outside. There aren't any fabric requirements with the templates, so we've put them in a link below. So you know how much fabric to buy when you do the project. When you reverse the colors, something really neat happens. The back of your project becomes its own work of art. I would love to do a baby quilt using this method. If you have an embroidery machine, think how you could personalize a project using these hexagons. When I decided to do this table runner, I did several layouts at home, and I chose just three across, but I did have a larger table runner. I also made flowers that sat together, and individual ones are coasters. So to put this together, these are my first zigzag rows. So I made long rows and then sat at the machine and zigzagged them together. Again, just a reminder for this project, I used the cream color thread because it blended. And in the project behind me, I used invisible thread. And here's what this project looks like on the back. I hope I've inspired you to try something new. We have a limited number of quilt as you go two and a half inch hexagon templates in the store. Uh, first come, first serve, but they can always be ordered, of course, and they should arrive in about two weeks. Thanks for joining me for How Tuesdays and join us tomorrow for Hump Day Deals Wednesday.